welcome to Friday Nights with Emma. Now, we're doing something a bit different tonight because you guys all asked for quilts last week. So we're having a little virtual quilt show. So we'll just give everybody a minute. This is my pile. This is literally all the quilts I have in the house, except for the one that's hanging up in the dining room that you see every week anyway. So just give everybody a minute to join. Just give us a thumbs up or a heart. Mikey is on camera today. So again, um, so say hi to Mikey. And once we've got a few people, we'll start going through the pile. Maureen, Brenda, hi, Maureen. Debbie, hi, Debbie, Joan. Hi, Joan. Monty. Philomena. Hi, Philomena. Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Diane. Christina. Hi, Christina. Terry. Hi, Terry. Dawn. Hi, Dawn. Hi. Judy. Hi, Judy. Your mom. Hello, mom. Lorraine. Hi, Lorraine. Debbie. Hello, Debbie. Joan. Hello, Joan. Christine. Hi, Christine. Sandy. Hello, Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Carol from Hi, a Carol. sunny Bristol. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was, it was been chucking it down now. The sun's just sort of trying to come through. But yeah, please send it our way. Jack, Jackie, Sarah. Hi, Jackie. Susan. Hi, Susan. Hi, Sarah. Oh, oh, don't let me forget. So I have to do a big shout out, big hello to Pam Lawrence. Because um, she's going through some bits. Anyway, big shout out to Pam Lawrence. Say hi to Pam Lawrence. Everybody say, give a little um, heart for Pam Lawrence. We're all thinking about it. Annette. Hi, Annette. Caroline. Hi, Caroline. Jeanette. Hi, Jeanette. Right, okay, we'll start then. So this is the one you also see every week that is Monty's favourite place to sleep in the morning. So it's completely, you can't see it, but there's a thick haze of Monty hair over the top. But this one. Hillary. Oh, hi, Hillary. Um... It was probably the second quilt I started. It wasn't the Caroline, second quilt I finished. Caroline, Bernie. Oh, hi, Caroline. Hi, Bernie. Annette, lovely evening in Cornwall. Oh, nice. And Dry and Kent, according to Lorraine. Oh, good, good, good. Good, 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 yeah. Hopefully it will start coming our way. Yeah, so this one. Oh. It's got a date of 2009 on it, but I know for a fact it was probably started in 1995. You were Sarah. Oh, hi, Sarah. And it's all hand pieced, all hand quilted, and it, it was Nan's, but now it's mine again. So that's that one. I'm just going to start another pile. Yeah, you, you'll have that one back again in a little bit, Monty. Um, they're not in necessarily any order of chronological order of when they were made. They're just piled up. So... Well, that was 3D there. <laughs> this is another one that was partly hand-pieced. All the blocks are hand-pieced. Um, and then all the sashing and the blocks are sewn together on the machine. But then I hand-quilted it. Brenda's watching. Oh, hi, Brenda. So this quilt is more recent. Diane is watching from oh, Oldham. Hi, Diane. Was it? Yeah, date on this is 2011. So this one, I saw the pattern for it, and you can see the corners are a little bit different. I didn't do corners on it, it's got, it's kind of an octagonal. Um, I saw the pattern for it in a magazine, and you could actually buy the kit with all the fabrics and do it. But, you know me, I like to have my own fabrics. So this was, all these fabrics, the ones that I bought when I was still in America in 20, 2009. So this would have been the last fabric that I bought there and collected for this quilt. So that was kind of fun. So this is, all this fabric is practically, except maybe the sashing, is from Michigan. Susan went for a walk this afternoon oh. and got wet through, but the sun yes. is shining now. I know, it was weird. So I was actually on my motorbike today as well, going around, and I thought it was gonna get wet, but it was dry and it was nice. And then literally, what was it, five o'clock when you got home? It was a downpour. It downpoured. So yeah. Annette, so that's that one. Annette likes that, loves that quilt. Oh, thanks. Oh, and this one. <laughs> you may have to be a certain age for this one, but the fabric on the back, I realized if 
you've ever played Zelda, the mask, what's the mask one called? Anyway, there's a, this, it's not the Ocarina of Time, it's Majora's Mask. This always reminds me of Link with one of his masks on, but you'd have to know that game. I, I don't know that. that game. Haley knows it. Denise Haley is it. watching. Christine is Hi, watching. Chris. Hi, Christine. Right, this one. This one's really recent, actually. I think I did this one last year, maybe. This is one of my Tilda quilts. It's very small. Well, that, that size, basically. Now these, and I think I've got a couple more in there as well somewhere. I've actually got pre-cut kits of these, which I don't have online yet. It might not be exactly the same colours. It's of the similar range. But I have these in a pre-cut pre -cut kit for sale, which I, if anybody's interested, let me know. But these, this size quilt, literally, because it's all pre-cut, you can put together in an afternoon. And it has all the instructions and everything with it. Dawn says she loves it. Oh, thank Judith you. is watching. Oh, and Susan you. says her granddaughter loves Zelda. Oh, yes. See, yeah. Well, that's why Link is called Link. Because of Zelda. And speaking of Link, he's in his... In his basket. In his basket, guarding the front. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guard, guarding. And then, just for... Because there's requests. Oh, yeah. There's Monty in his normal Monty. pause. Yeah, that's his typical... Is, is ready for action. Oh, yeah. This is our belly. Right. This, this one's a pretty big one. Now, this one... This one I made while I was in graduate school. I mean, literally, the piecing of the top took me like two days because it's all just bricks. But the collecting of the fabrics took me longer. So I went through a calf facet, oh, Amy Butler phase. And the, there was a little hardware shop, a little, little bit of everything shop actually in the town that we lived in and they sold these fabrics so I used to go and collect one or two fat quarters every every weekend or so or every month I can't remember now but it took me a while but then I cut them all up into bricks into rectangles and put it together literally two days this one was actually this is 2010 yeah because it's almost finished while I was still there this one was machine quilted by the um, lady that lived in the town. So this was probably my second quilt I'd ever have long armed. The first one is with Travis. Ross is watching. Oh, and you? Sarah says a fat cat. Fat cat. No, yes. just big boned. No, he is fat. No, he's, he's not. He weighs 20 pounds. Well, he, weighs at least, well, he used to weigh at least a stone. Yeah, you did, Monty. Sorry, <laughs> we're giving away your secrets. <laughs> oh, yeah. This one actually has polyester in it. So it's got polyester wadding. A lot of people ask me about polyester versus cotton. And you can see how drapey this one is now. I mean, it's not as drapey as if it was cotton. But once it's been washed a few times, and that one has been washed quite a few times, Joanne and her mum Maureen are watching. Oh, hi Joanne, hi Maureen. Carol is watching, Amanda is watching. Oh, hi Amanda. And Lorraine says she needs to grow her stash. <laughs> Only been sewing for three years. Oh, oh well, it will, it will soon happen, believe me. Mine just ex has exploded. It's, it's exploded into the attic. <laughs> it's gone that bad. This one. Sarah says, Monty's well, beautiful and massive. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he's a big, he's like a real life um, Garfield. Bagpuss. Yeah, Bagpuss. that too. Yes, you are. Now, this one was the first quilt I ever made for me. <laughs> Diane said he's just got a, a lot of coat. <laughs> Gorgeous fluff ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, Monty. See? <laughs> Laurie's watching. Oh, hi, Laurie. So this one again I collected because I, I have maybe I've seen a theme for most of them. I, I like tend to go for scrappy quilts, but they're not necessarily scrappy because of my stash. These are probably fat quarters or long quarters that I collected 
from Joanne's Fabrics when I was in America. And it held up pretty well. This dated 2003. So probably I did this quilt while I was uh, doing my bachelor's. So it would have been worked on. Eileen is watching. Oh, hi, Eileen. And says, those are gorgeous. Thanks. Lorraine also loves this quilt. Now and this... so does Carol. Oh, thanks. The only thing I found tricky with this one, and <clears throat> let's see, there's probably some... And I, I'm not supposed to pull out any mistakes, but just to show you, for this quilt, the bit where it really matters that you match is across here with the sashing, with the white. So if they don't match in the middle of the corners, that won't be so noticeable because you won't see it as much. But where it isn't really noticeable will be right here. So if you ever make a quilt like this, just focus on matching these bits as best you can because that's where any mismatches will be most noticeable. Don't panic about anything else. Joanne asked, Did you do you long arm all your quilts? Just trying to imagine how to get that on a machine. Oh, <laughs> no. Until I got my long arm machine, I always hand quilted. So this one's hand quilted. Um, They're pretty much all hand quilted. Well, the one I just showed, the bricks, that was long arm machined because I wanted it machine quilted uh, the tilde is machine quilted because I did that one the other ones are all hand quilted I'll show you the back so I've just done the lines on this one so I've quilted on either side of the sashing and then in the ditch across so that's all I've done on this one so it was a relatively quick um, to do the middle and then on the edge on the border though you can't see it too much in the front I've done scallops But yeah, I haven't. Well, I've got one project that's hand quilting at the moment, but I always used to do hand quilting at night in front of the telly. Back when I used to watch telly every night. Joanne says gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Yeah, not so much a summer thing to do, but definitely in the winter. Carol, Carol asks, hand quilting is a future demo? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, okay. I'll do that. I'll do that next week for you. Definitely, I can do that next week because I've got a couple of them. Uh, I've got a project here that's on the go for quilting, but I can do my cushion. Oh, this one. Now this one was fun actually. This one's a bit of a challenge. So this one was made with a jelly roll, and it's a sampler. So it, each block is different. Now. Joanne says, hand quilting scallops, please. Oh, hand quilting scallops. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it'll be the same, pretty similar to doing regular, actually. But I'll show you. Uh, Amanda's also said, never attempted hand quilting, but would love to have a go. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Eileen says, that is one big quilt. Fabulous. <laughs> Thanks. It... And Jeanette also says, great, I need to know how hand quilt. So hand quilting seems to be okay. a hit. We'll do hand quilting next week, then, for sure. Because this one's hand quilted as well. And I'll show you. Oh, but this was the book that it's from. It's um, Pam and Nikki Lintop. They've got a, a few jelly roll quilts. This is a sampler quilt. And you can make the sampler, but there are other... You can make quilts that have a more uniform as well in it. But what I loved about this is... Because when you get a jelly roll, you really have to use all the fabrics in it. And you can see on some of these, they've been more successful than others. It was tricky to get enough contrast on some of them. So I had to pick out all of my colours first and kind of put them together. That was the challenge on this one, was having enough contrasting fabrics. I think they've mostly been okay, but I think that was probably, this one's probably the least successful, only because I didn't have enough contrasting fabric, so a solid in there would have been good, I think there's a little bit too much pattern. Oh, let's see, Lorraine says she's just got into big stitch quilting, I'm slow but loving it, oh. and says she also looked forward to seeing the hand quilting. Okay, uh, good. Joanne says she's, oops, 
sorry. Uh, uh, okay, Joanne also says, I struggle to hide the thread when I'm, I finish it. Oh, okay, I'll show you, how, definitely show you how to do that. And Annette says, do you need a hoop to hand quilt? Yes, and I can show you mine. Well, you don't have to. It comes down to personal <laughs> preference. But what I find is if you've learned on a hoop, because I learned on a hoop, and then I taught my mum on a hoop, we both find it difficult to quilt without a hoop. But then people who have learned without the hoop find it hard to use a hoop. So it's totally personal preference. When I've taught a hand quilting, people tended to prefer to do it with the hoop. They found it a little bit easier. Kathleen is but, watching. Oh, hi, Kathleen. And Jane is watching. So the hand quilting on this one. This quilt, <laughs> funny enough, me and Kaylee had a little bit of a Dexter binge. So this quilt always reminds me of Dexter because I was quilting it watching Dexter. But yeah, so I've got some quilting design on there. And then it's just cross hatched. I don't know if you can see cross hatched in the border. And then I've just echoed some of the shapes. So it's not super heavily quilted uh, Christine says she's tried to hand quilt before but the quilting needles are too small yes okay yes definitely so I always quilt with um, sharps rather than betweens because the betweens are the short ones that you're supposed to quilt with but I can never get on with them because like you I find they're too short so I always use a sharps which is supposed to be for applique but so, yeah, it goes back to there's no right or wrong way, just the way that works for you. And I always use quite fine is another one that's hand quilted. Fine quilting, compared to some fine quilting thread. Um, I don't use uh, like embroidery floss or perle or anything like that. Tina is watching. Oh, hi, Tina. This is sheep. I've got one black sheep in there. So this one was on my list of ones to do probably since I started quilting. Because I saw the design in a book. It's got a label on it somewhere, I'm pretty sure. Oh, maybe I didn't label this one. <gasps> this is one that needs a label. I have to leave that out. I'm so I know. Well, I finished quilting. Don loves the sheep. Oh, thanks. I finished quilting it here in the UK actually, or maybe I finished the binding, I can't remember. But the sheep are all flannel, <laughs> so it's like winsiette brushed cotton flannel. Carol thinks heads. it's cute, oh, Christina thanks. loves the sheep, and Joanne says, wow, beautiful. Yeah, aww. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm... And then the sheep, I've got sheep in the um, border as well. So I, I had just enough fabric for this border because I bought the fabric thinking, oh, I'll do something with it. And then it ended up on the border and I had just enough, thankfully. Jeanette has done an embroidery one like this. Oh. And Anne says, gorgeous. How do you find the time to make all these quilts? <laughs> well, this one, oh, it's just, I, have, I haven't been as, I'm more prolific now than I was, I have to admit. This one's an older one. I just tend to work on the blocks a little bit at a time and then they grow up. I just, yeah. Um, I mean, I, did, I think I started making that one when I was, oh yeah, there's black sheep, um, in college, so. Lorraine says, it's an amazing show of your work, so oh, impressed. Nan says she loves the sheep one, maybe <laughs> yes. because she's Welsh. Oh, yeah. I, so the sheep one is from this book, which is an old, from 1991, which I actually, I had the pattern, um, but I just recently bought the book off eBay. But that's, um, that's in there. And it's got some other, it's all done with strips, which I quite liked because it was easy. Amanda's watching, and Diamond says, looks like the sheep on Minecraft. My son would love oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And also, Dawn also thought about the same with oh, okay. uh, Minecraft. Minecraft, yep. Oh, now this one, we were just talking about this one. This is an oldie, definitely. This is Michael's quilt. I made this for Michael. I think we did the, the usual deal where if you buy all the fabric, I'll make it for you. So he bought all the fabric and the wadding. 
and I made it for them. So this is a bear paw. It's out of one of my other favourite books, or my absolutely favourite book. And it's got green, because Michael likes green. And this is hand quilted. And the design on this one, I actually copied out of a just a design book. So I made my own stencil for the quilting. That one's 19 years? 19 years, yeah, that's what we decided, because we've been together 20. Mm. Susan says she's blown away by how big and beautiful they are. Love them all. Oh, thank you. Sarah says so clever and fast at everything. A very <laughs> talented lady. Oh. And then Christine wonders, where we store all these quilts? <laughs> a bit everywhere. So some of them end up in the airing cupboard. Some of them have been in our room. Some of them are on the wall. <laughs> yeah, I had to go and collect them. Jeanette, everywhere. Jeanette loves the green and white. And Dawn says she's pilt. Uh, pinching this the quilt she loves bear paws oh yeah well this this is the book it's from um there's three editions of this book and i had the first edition well i've had all of them but the first edition was one that i started with the second edition is the one i recommend i actually have it in the shop and this one is the one that i teach from when i do beginner quilting because i love the way it gives you some introduction in the front on about fabrics and tools and then all of the patterns are I which I quite like traditional patterns they go from the easiest pattern and then they get a little bit more difficult as it goes through the book so you can kind of get an idea if you're a beginner where you know what you can start with and progress to but a lot of my quilts I'm sure the bear paw is in here. There it is. The only thing I didn't do was the sawtooth triangles around the edge. But that's where it's from. And it gives you yardages. Uh, the second edition has metres. The first edition only has yards. But you can make a, um, a cut size, a single bed size, a double size or a king size. And it gives you instructions for all of those. So you're not limited to one size of the quilt. Deborah, Barbara, yeah. and Sand are watching. Oh, hi, Deborah. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Sand. Oh, yeah, I have made that one as well. I made that one for Kaylee. Uh, Amanda asks, that's the book with the lovely star in it, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is, which I've got an example of, actually. Not exactly the same, but instructions taken from this. So I've made that one. Uh, I've made the Sawtooth Star that came out of this for Kaylee, which you'll see. This is the Bethle Star of Bethlehem that Amanda's asking about. Oh, and then the other thing, sorry, I'm raving about this book, but this is literally my favourite book. For all of the patterns, if you want to do American hand piecing like I've shown, you can. So they've got, um, in the front, it's machine pieced instructions, basically. And in the back, it refers to all of these templates. So it'll tell you, you need template whichever. And you can use these templates to do American hand piecing as well for all of the patterns. So that's all in there. And that's Mathe as well. So you've got that option of doing it on the machine or by hand. Ooh, Sarah says, do you sell any of these? Yes, this one is in, on the shop for sure because I love it. I've got some new ones and some second-hand ones as well. Uh, That's that. Sally is watching. Oh, hi, Belinda Sally. is watching. And Jackie says she has the first edition of that book. Lovely. Yes, I like the first edition. I like the first edition because I like the patterns. The, the fabric's a little bit different in this one, but it's not so bad. The third edition is horrible. I'm just putting it out there. Anyway, so this one, actually, I think I might finish this tomorrow. I've decided this is my... Saturday night movie and sewing one. So this is um, from a pattern I have. It's a Hawaiian quilt. Mm. Halloween. Haven't I need to finish the binding on it, so it's kind of a whip. But that's one of the um, two colour ones. So that will go up. Get finished for tomorrow. So I'm just going to uh, chuck it on my chair because that needs to get finished. Ooh. So this one, this one you've already seen, 
kind of. So, Marina is watching. Oh, hi, Marina. I'm just on the couch so you can see it. Careful. I need to take a final picture of this, and what I'll do is when I post it, I'm going to give you the dimensions for all the strips so you can, you can see exactly how it was done. But yeah, so that's my rainbow strip quilt. Pieced, can be pieced together in a day. So yeah, so I'm quite chuffed with that. Penny says she loves the Halloween quilt. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I like those. I'm gonna get some more. I have a few of her patterns. So they're two fabric patterns, Hawaiian applique. Monty. I think Monty's claimed this one. He's like, oh, oh, I haven't seen this one before. This is new. <laughs> Cindy says she loves that one. Thank you. And Joanne says, stunning. Thank you for sharing the process. So does Monty like that one, apparently. Come on. Come on. Terry is watching. Hi, Terry. I need to uh, finish tying it in and binding that one, but... Yeah, I'm quite chuffed with that. That would be a good summer quilt. Susan says, amazing. Diamond oh, said, you. finished rainbow. That is awesome. Oh, yay. And Penny says, cats. Yeah. <laughs> this is a bit, this, so this one, this one, well. And Joanne says, the reversal of the rose really is incredible effect, incredibly effective. Oh, thank you. Love the color that he sat on. <laughs> <laughs> This is one of those quilts that I worked on, and I'm sure you guys get have had quilt fatigue as well. Um, I got the idea from a picture in a catalogue, and so all of these stars are hand pieced. So it's a block that's a star, and then it's basically what a nine patch, a big nine patch in between to make the chain rows. But once it was done. I folded it up and I really didn't like it. I'm like, nah. So it's, I finally quilted it. This has got the dahlia pattern on it. And I finished it. The backing has got that nice silky sateen cotton backing. So we use this on our bed because it's a nice big one. It's really nice for the summer to just lay under the, a quilt when it's really hot nights. But it's okay. I really consider this one a utility quilt because I'm kind of meh, meh over it. So this one probably does get a little bit abused, but. But Carol says, lovely rainbow. I just finished a rainbow Bargello quilt top. Oh, lovely. Just have to add the wadding and backing and then attempt to quilt it. Quilt it, nice. Oh, Monty likes this quilt though. This is one of Monty's favorite quilts. I think it's pink. <laughs> Penny says, gosh, beautiful, but so big. You are excused fatigue. Lovely neutral <laughs> quilt. Thank you. Yeah. And Marina says she'll never have the patience for that one. Rainbow at most. <laughs> uh, Lorraine asks, is that Irish chain? Kind of, yes. Um, yeah. You can do, that would be considered a single Irish chain because it's just got a nine patch um, and then you can add more colours so you can go double or triple even more. I've got a nice pattern for, a, it's got like four or five colours in it I think that makes a chain like that. Oh this one. So this one I made for my beginner quilt class. So all of these sampler blocks are from the Quilts 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 book. And I've got another one that has the same blocks but in a different colour and it looks completely different. But I don't have it with me here. And this one's hand quilted, machine pieced but hand quilted. Uh, Jackie says Sackerwell is open again. Oh, it is? Or is it yet? Because I haven't heard anything from them yet. It's a, um, uh, it is a statement. Is open again. Oh, is open again. Oh, okay. I'll have to um, get in touch with them and see what the status is of, of classes. Because I think, yeah, I'm not sure what the status is of gatherings and all of that is. 
but yeah, we need to get that started again. And that one has a label because I did it. We did it together, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Um, oh. Now, some of you have probably seen some of these because these were at the shop. But this is my flying geese. This is in the Quilts, Quilts, Quilts book as well. Now, this one was made... Hey, probably 96, something like that, 97. And <laughs> funnily enough, I mean, this is pretty early on. Every single fabric in here is, was, was my stash at the time. So I took everything that was in my stash and I literally cut everything up and this was the result. So that is machine pieced. But hand quilted and it's got cotton in it so it's it's a quite heavy one actually and it has that lovely drapey it's been washed a lot so you can see what happens when it was cotton when you wash it a lot it gets that nice drapey heavy it's another one of monty's favorite quilts and oh i'm going to show you one bit oh this bit it's a little bit more faded this was an original flower sack cloth that somebody gave me so from way back when when they used to actually make flour in cloth sacks so people could actually reuse the fabric it's just that one that's a bit special i like this one because i'm like oh yeah i remember that fabric i remember buying that i remember using it for a different quilt this is another good summer quilt but it's nice and heavy, but it is it keeps you cool as well. Joanne asks, do you do you lay it out all lay it all out or piece as you go? For that one, <laughs> that one was a lot of well fun. <clears throat> so what I did for this, because again I like scrappy, but I also don't really like to have two fabrics together that are the same. So what I did with this. I sewed my first row, I can't remember which side it was, one or the other. So I sewed my first row with the right amount of triangles. And then what I did, because I made all my triangles first, and then I laid them out in rows. So I'd lay them all out in rows and then mix them around to make sure that, say, for instance, this red, I don't want two reds together. So I literally laid them all out row by row on the floor and then did them a little bit at a time. It took me quite a while. It wasn't, because Kaylee was little then, so Kaylee would have only been a toddler. So I didn't have a lot of time. I think it was probably sewn during afternoon naps. Uh, Christine says you could do your own festival of quilts. <laughs> And this one was also one of Nanny's. It came back to me. Uh, this one's a recent one. This one actually hangs on our bedroom wall normally. If I get the right way up. Yeah, that's the right way up. Oh no, that's the right way up because that's where the sleeve is. Yeah, because we did our bedroom all in greys. So I had to make a quilt to go with it. That was all... Um, Charm squares. So I had two packs of charm squares. Um, one was all white. This is grunge. And one was shades of grey. And I did them the same method I did for the Tilda one earlier this year. So that'll go back on the wall. Oh! Aha! This one. <clears throat> this one's Mum's. I made this for Mum. And... This is the pattern out of the, the star out of the book. But the fabric came from Sisters Oregon. I wasn't there for the quilt festival, unfortunately, and we never got there for that. It was always it seemed too far away. But I was going through Sisters for work one summer and we stopped there. And I'm like, we have to go to the quilt shop. So this was all bought at the quilt shop in Sisters. Um, no, I don't have it here. There is one fabric. I think I've got it for binding on something else that isn't finished yet. 
that's um is from the Oregon Trail. I can't remember what fabric it is. But that's all hand quilted. That hangs on Mum's wall, so I have to go back to Mum. This is another Tilda. This one I've also got kits for. So I'll have to dig these kits out and put some pictures up so you guys can see. But it all comes pre-cut and with instructions on how to make it exactly just like that. But they're so quick, you can make it in an afternoon. That's my Tilda. Oh, it's a bit like Christmas. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that one. So this is my Hawaiian one. Hawaiian quilts are on my list of ones to do for quite a while. But I didn't want to make a big one. I didn't want to commit to that. So this came up as a challenge to make. What are you laughing at? Lori says, do you still do your job with the flowers? <laughs> <laughs> Not at the moment. But yeah, I quilt. And I was quilting for a sewing quarter and doing my full-time job. I just, yeah. Penny also says, Sisters, Oregon. I love the quilt roadies on YouTube. She is from Sisters, Oregon. Oh, okay, yeah. And so talented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we went to Sisters, didn't we? Mm -hmm. I think we stopped at the quilt shop then, didn't we? Yep. We probably did. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is my version of a Hawaiian. This is my own pattern that I made. I wanted it to be more English, more English motifs. There's not many quilt shops we haven't visited in the, the continental United States. <laughs> Oh, at least in Oregon. And Michigan. We went to Michigan. Uh, yeah. Diamond. Oh, I'm sorry. It jumps. Diamond has the Tula Pink Starburst quilt kit in box ready to start. Ooh. That will be coming your way. Nice, nice, nice. Lorraine says she loves a, a kit. Dawn says in teaching. Oh, okay. And oh. Judith says pre-cut kit sounds good as this is my downfall. Oh, okay. I'll have to. I'll get some pictures out and show you what they are. This is another jelly roll one. My mum has, did I quilt it? I can't remember. I think mum just has the towel. I think she quilted it. Mum has a sister one. So I had exactly the same jelly roll and I made it exactly the same. So mum's got exactly the same quilt as well. Jackie says, how about a kit split to a block of the month? Yes. Yes, yes. We already talked about that. It's in the works. Yes. Oh, and then I hand quilted leaves on that border. And this one has the fancy label because I used some of the jelly roll fabric. Yeah, that was a fun one actually because it was a jelly roll. That didn't take long to piece, to be honest with you. I think I remember doing that. Let's see, what's next? Oh, that's my other Hawaiian one that is the same but not finished. Oh, this is the cushion cover. You guys have already seen that. I sent put pictures of it. Anne is watching. These are one of the patterns that we've got. I've got for to do at Sacra Well when they finally when we get sorted for that. And Jeanette says pre-cut kit, please. Okay. I'll dig them out. I'll put some pictures up. And Joanne asks, what design was that? Oh, I, I believe. Oh, this is a Helen. Sorry, I went to stretch you quick. This is a Helen Newton one. Three mo. Um, free motion drawing basically on the top it's applique and then you just free motion over it you don't have to do free motion sometimes it's a little bit easier on some spots you can just use a normal foot and then just rotate but it, it does go a bit quicker doing free motion on it and you don't have to be absolutely perfect you can see I was a bit off on here sometimes if you're a little bit off from the lines it actually makes it look a little bit better well makes it look sorry um joanne meant the quilt before oh this one um or this one hang on um show them up and go a b and c okay a b c give joanne a minute I'll say B. B? Okay. That was mine. That, that was what I wanted to say. This is another Nikki 
Kamaliki Lintot pattern from one of their books. I don't remember which book. Yep, it is B. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's from Pam and Nikki Lintop book. Jolly Roll book. Say that again. So which one? Where was it from? Uh, Pam and Nikki Lintop Jolly Roll book. It's not the sampler one that I showed earlier. It's from a different one. They do some nice books on, on using Jolly Rolls. I, yeah. I like using a Jolly Roll because it's a challenge. It's a challenge to find enough of that particular colour in the roll or enough contrast so it makes it a little bit more interesting interesting to do anyway oh this one everybody well not everybody but a lot of people might recognize this one this was my first ever sewing quarter quilt it's the only one i bought back from them and diamond says yes been waiting for the bird pond bird, that's it the bird pond quilt yes so yeah, so that's unfortunately it's not getting you I haven't used it at all. It's just been folded up and put away. I should. I should give it a wash and and use it somewhere. We don't really have anything pink. But I think Kaylee knows at some point these are all gonna end up with her, so she needs to. And Lori says she remembers that one. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. The instructions actually make it look a lot bigger than it actually came out. Oh, now this one is my That's very, an old one. This is, this is old. This is my very first quilt. Kaylee's quilt. And it is, it is definitely, yeah. Oh, it's upside down. Uh, it Penny says she bought the pattern and fabric from Sewing Quarter yet to make. Oh. And Lori asks, would you ever sell any of your quilts? I would. It depends. I always find it gets a bit depressing when you go on Etsy and you see how much they go for. Pretty much for how much fabric and wadding is gone into them. They don't really charge much for the, for the labour. So I tend to gift, either gift them or make a deal where people will buy the fabric and wadding and I will make them for them. Uh, Jeanette asks, what is the name of the second edition book you recommend again? Oh, Quilts. It's Quilts, Quilts, Quilts. Quilts, Quilts, Quilts by uh, Diana McClellan and Laura Knows. And I do have some on the website for sale. They're, they're a bit hard to come by now because the, the third edition is out and you can mostly find a third edition, which I hate. Second edition is the best one. Uh, Marina says, just gave me an idea to combine these huts with stripes for... Oh. Um, Joanne says she loves the star with the moon. Yes, I got that idea from the lady who taught me. She took a picture of a quilt and I, I recreated it. But this was all hand-pieced, completely hand-pieced, hand-quilted, because I didn't have a sewing machine at the time. And I didn't have a rotary cutter or mat. I had a ruler... So I think for the borders, I actually drew, for these bits, I think I actually drew them out on the back of the fabric and then pieced them together. I didn't actually have a ruler to cut those out. Sandy asks, yeah. is the Halloween quilt in a book? The Halloween quilt is a pattern, which I do have on the website. It's a Hawaiian one. I, I do have some left. I am going to put another order in with a lady that, that makes these patterns um, so it's two fabrics and then you can either um, the instructions do show you how to hand applique so it's reverse applique so you you under under it but the easier way of doing it is actually with bonder web and then how this is bonder web and machine stitching over the edge I've got a blanket stitch on this. That is the easier way of doing it. Or you can do it by hand as well. But it just takes three quarters of a metre. Me. Three quarters of a metre of fabric for the orange. And then a full metre for the background. And if you want the border. Yeah. 
if you want the border to match the orange then you'd need a four meter of the orange if you want the binding to match the background then you need a four meter of the background if that makes sense but yeah there's a few designs there and i'm going to get one that i really like which is of a old-fashioned singer sewing machine which would be nice there's a, there's a nice um dragonfly one as well which i haven't done but i do have some pictures of ladies who've taken the class penny said she made her made her first quilt for my youngest son now I'm making for the older ones four done three oh, to go yeah. yay 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 okay now this one sarah says the hawaiian quilts are easy to make and very effective yes sarah took the class she has stunning well they both christina and hers are stunning and i wondered this too but i wasn't going to ask but laurie's asking it so now i can ask why are they called hawaiian quilts there's not anything associated with hawaii oh it's the it's well so they're hawaiian quilts because that's the style in hawaii so they have a particular style so they are two color fabrics generally so the hawaiian ones um have more like pineapple motifs and more tropical motifs and they tend to be red and white but other colors as well but it's the it's the technique of doing it so it's just two fabrics where you layer one on top of the other it's more of the technique and the design christina loves the hawaiian barbara loves the patterns so this one Della is watching. Oh, hi, Della. This one is Alice, my Alice quilt. This one I was asked to do for a gallery and festival of quilts by the traditional quilt group. And the theme that year was Adventures in Wonderland. So this was the quilt. This one usually hangs up in our hallway, which we'll have to go back there now. I had something else hanging up. They had the pink and brown one there. This will go back up there now. But it's supposed to be, well, you can interpret it how you like, but the idea was this block at the top is Alice normal, and this is her Alice band, or normal. And then as it goes down, it, things get a bit more twisted and weird until you get to the Cheshire Cat at the bottom. This one's all hand-pieced, completely hand-pieced and hand-quilted. Everyone is loving the Alice quilt. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So that needs to go back up in a hallway. Now, our, our curtain rod, my curtain rod broke for a long time. We finally got that fixed, didn't we? So now we've got to put the quilt back up. Oh, you've seen this one. I do have a, I will have to do a bigger one again. This is the tessellated bird. This is just a block, but I have made it bigger. We did, I did a, um, one of the early tutorials on this one. That's, yeah, that's that one. That one was done for a, a Remembrance Day. That was for the anniversary of the end of World War One. I. I think this is the last one in here. <laughs> now this one is technically massive it's technically a, still a work in progress because it still needs quilting but this was one of the early uh, Lorraine asks how do you wash them I literally just put them in the washing machine and either hang them on the line or if they're small enough stick them in the tumble dryer I am not precious about my quilts at all um, bigger ones like a duvet size big ones Best go to the laundromat or laundrette. This one's big. Yeah, this this one's. This one's a big one. This one's a big daddy. This one took me a while to collect the fabrics, but this one I made in the nineties. So this one, all of the leaves are hand pieced, and then machine pieced together. But some of the leaves still need quilting. I ended up, <clears throat> this one actually went to a long arm quilter and she quilted all in the black for me. So now I just have to finish the leaves. Some of them are still marked, but some of them, the markings have come off. So maybe one day I'll finish it. But this one was long. A 
long process. And it's got the tartan flannel on the back. Yeah, it's a heavy one too. It's heavy. It's definitely a winter. A winter one. It was going to be, it hasn't got a label because it's not finished yet, but it was going to be called Falling into Autumn. Uh, Tina says, wow. Joanne says, that is gorgeous. I love the colored graduation. Oh, thank you. And Laurie says, I love that one, like autumn colors and oh, maple yeah, leaves. Now, this one is also a cautionary tale. So, I think I used polycotton black. And when I pressed it, I think I pressed it too hot. And so, it has some singe marks where it, it wore a hole. And then over the time, it's worn a hole in it. So, it needs to be patched up. So that's the reason that we recommend 100% cotton for quilting. Careful. Yeah, it's long. So, yeah. This, oh yeah, see, there's another bit here. It needs to be patched up for that same reason. So this poor quilt, I really do need to finish him. And um, Yeah, it's a nice one. Yeah. Give him a little bit of love. But yeah, this probably would have been... The third quilt that I started way back when. I've even got some fossil fern in it. You can still get fossil fern. I sell fossil fern. That's that fabric. Love fossil fern. Yeah. Is that that one? Oof. That one's heavy. That one does literally live in the airing cupboard. Um, oh. I've got some things that are in progress, but I did want to show you, because I did talk about it a while ago. Another Mariner's Compass. So this one, instead of being a foundation paper piece, like the one on the wall, it's all hand-pieced. Because you know I hate foundation paper piecing, so I hand-pieced this one. But this one was going to be some sort of Christmas Christmas one. I can show it you. This, this again was also started quite a while ago. These are all my templates for the um, for the piecing. That's the middle. I'm sure I've got yeah, I've got more in here as well. But the book is from because you have asked me. <coughs> is this this one? Judy, I know it's Judy something, Judy Matheson. And this quilt on the cover is absolutely stunning. I don't know if I'll be able to find a picture for you, but this is all Mariner's Compass quilts. Oh, there it is. That's the um, cover art quilt. And it has patterns in the back, as well as teaching you how to draft your own Joan asks so much loveliness this evening. How will you square it off into a panel or will you keep it the same shape? So for this one, I had kind of in the back of my mind with the leaf quilt, I was going to do one similar to that. I was going to do um, two or three more Mariner's Compass like this. And then have them interlocking a little bit. I don't know, there's one of these patterns where they do overlap. I can't, I'm sure it's in here somewhere. But I had it in my mind, it just never has materialised yet. I still have some fabric, so I could still do it. And I've got lots of this background fabric, I bought it particularly for, for that idea. So I wanted to make another big quilt with a few more but it'll, it might happen we'll see sandra says you must have tremendous patience it shows in your display <laughs> of quilts <laughs> well yeah i don't think michael would agree with that <laughs> see i can't sit still and i can't just sit and watch television or i can't just sit and not do anything so that's why i like the hand piecing because i can take it with me i do it in the car Anyway, I can't just sit. So I, I think it's from being too fidgety. I can't not be doing something. 
Right, that's that one. Oh, yeah, then I've just got these, which you've probably mostly already seen. This one is still... Uh, Laurie says it would be lovely as a round quilt. Oh, that's true. Oh, this is the prisoner. <laughs> I haven't finished this one yet. I've, I've stuck them down. I need to I'll continue um, free motion quilting around the edges of all my flowers and then finally get it done. But yeah, I do like this one. This would be a wall hanging somewhere. You don't like this one, do you? Um, no, I don't, I don't, I don't mind it. It's not your thing. Yeah. I like it. So yeah, that's a pattern that I've got as well. We did a class on that one. They, and they were stunning. Everybody's came out different because everybody had different colored bikes, different colored flowers. They were really nice. Uh, Christina says she must finish her bike. It's my end of term project. Oh, Anne is watching. And that one's a bit boring because we've already seen those ones. You haven't seen this one yet because this has been one of my lockdown quilts. This is well, another sewing quarter one. But the <laughs> one that I made. I try to be. <laughs> so this is one I finished. This will probably end up with Kaylee. Because she liked it. Hmm. Uh, Christina said she got a black cat to peek out of her flowers. Oh, yes. Yes. And then Jeanette and uh, can't cannot do anything either. Has to be busy. Yeah, see? So it's, I don't I think it's patience. <laughs> I think it's a lack of patience. Uh, Diamond asked, why do I call it the prisoner? It's for, it's from the television show, the, yeah. the, the cycle. Yeah. So that's that one. That will get quilted at some point. And Barbara says she hasn't finished hers that you guys did in class oh well there's no i mean you've seen my projects i mean that that mariner's compass one i've had for pff, over 20 years so it doesn't matter now i've got a cat in the bag <clears throat> i need the last two. Oh wait this one i do this one because those two are kind of already done i'll show you this has been hand quilted uh, Laurie says it reminds me of the movie The Birds. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Sandy says she remembers The Prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me and Mark used to watch it. Americans, well, some Americans, especially men, like watch The Prisoner and think, oh, it's so deep. It's so meaningful. I must be intelligent because I'm watching it. And I told him, like, no, it doesn't make any sense. It's not supposed to make any sense. And then he well, found out that they are just literally writing the script on the day. <laughs> uh, Joanne says, such a range of different colors, colorways across different quilts. You have a great eye for color. Oh, thank you. And Diamond says she remembers the horrible ball yes! thing on the beach from the prisoner. Yes. Yes. We actually went to Port Marion. Yes, we did. It's, it's a very interesting place. It is a nice place. Yeah. yeah, so this is my, yeah, this is all hand pieced. Now I'm hand quilting it. I've had trouble deciding on the quilting on this, so I've kind of just gone with straight lines. So this would be one of the ones that I'll show the hand quilting. I've done it a little bit different than I normally do, a little bit bigger stitches than I normally do. But this one I've just noticed has been, so Link has a thing for eating wadding. This wasn't like this. This is Link, who's been eating my wadding. Crazy cat. Cactus, he eats cactus. He eats wadding, plays fetch. You're a weird cat. Oh, and this is my hoop. I can show you right now. It's, it's not a hoop, it's a square. I know, but it is, it is. Actually, Michael bought me this. Yes, thank you. He did. I said it was a better idea than the hoop. Yeah, because I used to have a wooden hoop, which was a big, like an embroidery hoop, but it's massive. And yeah, that's what I always used to use, but this one is much, much better. So I've just put my frame underneath. I like that it's square, so I can get to the edges better. With the hoop, it's a little bit more difficult. Oh wait, I've got a needle here somewhere there. I was doing, I need to go over here. Laurie says as a kid she watched The Prisoner. Dawn says, strange cat. Joanne says, I thought it was moss, the, what Link did. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
It's late. That's, that's one of the reasons he's not allowed in my sewing room. Because he eats wadding. Amanda says her cats Pumpkin and Evie play fetch too. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're about the same age as Link. She got, Amanda got them at the same time. Pumpkin's a nice colour. He's a nice cat. Although I've never met them. Nice. <laughs> Jeanette says blame the moss. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll blame the cat because it's you. <laughs> yeah, so that is that is basically it. So I've got a nice flat back. That's why I like a hoop. Because otherwise my back, and my fabric gets all um, scrunched up. I can never keep it flat and straight. So yeah, so that's my hoop on. And that's how I quilt, which I'll show you next week. Uh, and then last two. <laughs> Amanda says she got them because of Link. That is true. <laughs> that is true. I was a bad influence. You've already seen these, pretty much, because I showed pictures. This is the one that I did a few weeks ago now. Well, Cindy said one of her cats ate thread with a needle on the end. Had to oh. go through the vets quickly. Oh, dear. Amanda says, I couldn't resist after meeting him. Yes. Joanne asked, do you sell the hoops? Yes. Yes, I do. I do have those because I, I love them. So, I, yeah, I only sell stuff that I, I use myself and know and love. So, yes, I do have those. I think Ju I've got them in a couple of sizes. I'm not sure. Judith yeah. also uses the square frames, too. They're great for hand quilting. Because I love the See how you get it to the edge? When I used to have a round one, I used to have to tack a towel onto the edge and then have that to keep the tension to put it through the hoop. But with a square one, it's so much better. I, and all I do when I get to the edge is put some pins along there to keep it smooth and flat. And then I can just put my hoop over the, um, the wadding. Marie says, Lo loving yeah. seeing all the quilts. Is there any chance you could do show us how to hand quilt one evening? I think we're yeah, doing yeah, that next week. Next week. <clears throat> I'll do hand quilting next week for sure. And Di Diana says, I don't think Link would have done it. He looks too angelic to do <laughs> such a thing. You <laughs> don't know Link. Yeah. <laughs> His nickname is Butter, but he really, Butter will melt. I might hand quilt this one actually. Can't decide yet. But yeah, and this is the one that I did a few weeks ago as well. Yeah, I like this one. You like this one? Yeah. So that's it. That's all the quilts I have in the house. Literally. So thank you for watching. Hopefully that was interesting for everybody. Got my grape juice. Cheers. Have a good weekend. And next week we'll do hand quilting. And I'll see you then. Bye. Not all.